Oh, I'm really going to enjoy doing this review. How's it going everybody out there? My name is Jake James Lugo and welcome to the channel. So we're going to go back to the past to one of the very first video games I ever played on my Sega Genesis. Even though it wasn't the specific first one, that belongs to Sonic the Hedgehog, but this was one of the first games I played back then on the console. And like most other Sega kids that were around during the real console wars, we all heard of a game called Altered Beast. Now this game gets a real bad rap over the years for whatever reason, but we're really going to dive into this. And even though I know I've talked about it a few times on this channel, let's give it a proper review and see what exactly is up with this game. So without further ado, let's just dive into this review. This is Altered Beast. Altered Beast on the Sega Genesis is a port of the arcade game with the same name from 1988, but was released on the console a year later. This was the original packing game for the Sega Genesis here in America, which was later changed to Sonic the Hedgehog. Alter Beast is an action game that follows a nameless centurion summoned by Zeus to rescue his daughter Athena from the god of the underworld, Neph. The overall theme is Greek mythology, but the game also has some parallels to Sega's Golden Axe series in a few random ways. Most people might know Alter Beast because of its famous integration of digitized voices in the arcade version, including iconic phrases like Live from your grave and Welcome to your doom Fun fact, it's also where the phrase Beast Mode really comes from, contrary to popular belief. The game has gotten a bad rap over the years because of the general word of mouth about it being a terrible game. But is it really as bad as people say, or is that a little over-exaggerated? Now before anything else, I have to say that I am a fan of the central theme, which is Greco-Roman mythology in Alter Beast. There's just something about that aesthetic and something about that storytelling that just really appeals to me. But there's two specific things about Alter Beast that I want to talk about and highlight because I feel like they don't get talked about enough. The first thing I want to highlight is this kick-ass box art. I mean, look at this thing. This box art is awesome. It's something that is really a lost art form amongst game releases now these days, but back in the 16-bit and even arguably the 8-bit era, this was something that was really freaking cool because it would catch your eye back in the stores. And with something like Altered Beast, I feel like it has one of the best box arts that's on the Sega Genesis, arguably, of course. The other thing that I feel is pretty important to discuss about Altered Beast is this right here. Yeah, you heard that right. I think that Altered Beast has one of the best death sounds in any video game. Seriously, I think it could literally be applied to almost just about anything, especially in this day and age. I mean, think of it like this. Whenever I drop a sick burn on somebody on Twitter, or better yet, whenever I go in on somebody on Street Fighter V or I completely demolish somebody in Super Smash Bros., or even better yet, when I go up against trolls and a lot of really bigoted people in the comment section or over social media that are trying to be nothing but jerks and not help the gaming culture whatsoever, and then I walk right up to them to their face and tell them straight to their face that they suck. <laughs> Seriously, I know it's stupid, but it's something that's funny, and I feel like not enough people talk about the death sound in this game. It's just really ridiculous and goofy, and I just, again, it gives me a real fun laugh, so I just wanted to put it out there, so anyway. But anyway, that aside, let's get right back into the game and let's start talking about gameplay specifically. Why is it that this game gets such a bad rap? The first word that comes to mind with the gameplay of Altered Beast would be basic. Because of the era it was developed in, Sega focused more on trying to create an authentic arcade game experience for home consoles, as opposed to making a deep game to spend a lot of time with. For some, that might be enough to dismiss the game outright, but if you're willing to look beyond its shallowness, then you'll understand why Altered Beast is the way it is. Being one of the first Genesis games at launch, Altered Beast doesn't have a complicated control scheme. You can punch, kick, and jump while moving around, which is useful for fighting hordes of monsters that are looking to destroy you. The screen constantly moves to the right and pushes you along with it, with monsters appearing all over as you progress, and eventually stopping when you run into Neff. He will either repel you and run away, or turn into a giant monster you must fight in order to complete the level. However, that doesn't happen unless you're able to collect three blue magical spheres and unleash your power as the Altered Beast. In other words, you need to enter beast mode in order to fight the boss. You do this by killing a blue wolf that appears in the stage and collecting the magic sphere it drops. When you gather three and become the altered beast, you turn into a powerful animal for that stage and all of your attacks become ridiculously powerful, to the point that some might say your powers break the game overall. This isn't entirely true since you could still be killed like before, but you are definitely powerful nonetheless. Only when you enter beast mode are you able to fight Neff when you encounter him. He'll turn into the boss, which is different for each stage. Defeating him isn't hard, it's actually pretty easy, but if you aren't careful you could get killed before you realize it. This same formula repeats itself multiple times throughout the whole game, which could get very monotonous. 
So the game itself is very basic in nature, but that was really a big defining trait of a lot of arcade games back in the day. And because Sega was so obsessed with bringing the arcade experience to the home consoles, I feel like that was going to be another thing that was transferred over one to one from the arcade scene over to the Sega Genesis. And a lot of people use this as a negative point against Altered Beast, and I feel like it's just coming from a place where they're not really understanding a lot of where games were at at the time. They're really comparing it to more modern day stuff. And also I feel like a lot of people just jump on this bandwagon just for the sake of just wanting to be in with the in crowd. If you really look at it, if you take away all the preconceived notions and just look at it as what the experience that Altered Beast presents to you, I can't really in good faith say that this is a terrible game based on that stuff alone. The gameplay formula is definitely monotonous, it could get overly repetitive, and it's very short overall, but I still feel like for what it does, again, trying to reenact that arcade type of experience, it does so to a, at least, you know, on par point. It's at least satisfactory. But there are a few things that I really could harp on that I do understand where people are coming from when talking about Altered Beast, and that's a lot of the different bugs and glitches and other things that you run into. Alter Beast is not a long game. There's only about 5 stages to get through and you can realistically finish it in under 20 minutes. It took me a little less when playing this for review, but keep in mind that's me playing alone and taking a lot of the longer routes with some of the stages. So technically you could take far less time to finish it. The game also allows for a second player to join in on the action at any time, so you can finish everything faster if you want to. This was a common trait among arcade games back in the day, where the experience was quick to get into and quick to get out as well. I know there were many other arcade games with better approaches to this, but this doesn't necessarily make Altered Beast a bad game. What does, however, really bog down the experience is how buggy and glitchy some aspects of the game can be, whether that's getting hit by the same enemy multiple times without warning, or falling into a pit from a cheap random attack. It's the glitches and bugs you run into that impact the whole experience. However, sometimes this can work into your favor, as it did to me when I was playing Altered Beast for review. Look at what happened to me during the final battle of the game against Neff's final form. This is supposed to be the climactic battle where you and Neff duke it out to save Athena. When I was younger, this battle would always give me trouble because of how unfair Neff would be at times with his powerful attacks when he turned into a giant rhino. But check out what actually happened. Welcome to your doom. You see what I mean? Because of this I could totally understand why people say this is a bad game. However, I feel there are worse games out there that don't function as well as this, so in that regard I can't say that Alter Beast is a completely terrible game. Has it aged well over the years? Not really. But can Alter Beast be a fun distraction for a short time? I would definitely say so, whether you're alone or have a friend with you. I really feel like all the bugs and glitches that pop up throughout the game are what really people harp on when they're saying that Alter Beast is a terrible game. I think when you also mix in the fact that the game is overall very, very short, I finished it in about less than 20 minutes, and you could probably do it even faster if you had another person with you to play co-op. Just all these things mixing together give this bad perception of what Alter Beast actually is. But even with all that being said, I can't say that this game is terrible by any stretch of the imagination. I feel like there's so many more far significantly worse games out there than what Alter Beast presents to the player. It's a quick get in and get out type of game. It has a whole bunch of gimmicks that work together with its theme and its overall aesthetic. It's not something you're going to spend a lot of time with, but it's just there for a quick type of fun experience where you could bring in another friend and stuff. And for that, I think it's a fine game for what it is. Like I said before, has Ultra Beast really aged all that well? To be totally honest with you, not really. I feel like it's aged almost terribly in hindsight compared to a lot of the stuff that's coming out now. But one thing I do want to note also is that the game has been ported to so many different devices. If the game was really that terrible and people were really turned off by it, Sega wouldn't be porting it to all these different types of platforms, including iOS, the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One with some of the Sega collections. There's all these different places where you could play Alter Beast. That being said, I would be remiss not to talk a little bit about the arcade version of this game, which has better visuals, better presentation overall, even though for the most part it's exactly the same game. There's also like a couple better sound clips here and there, again, because this was made for the arcade type of hardware, but a lot of the stuff that at least was lost in that version going over to the Sega Genesis, the rest of it, as far as gameplay content, as far as the bosses, and a lot of other things are pretty much one for one. Another thing I do have to mention, which is a neat piece of trivia, is that Alter Beast was on the Famicom. Believe it or not, a Sega game on a Nintendo platform. It wasn't released here in America or in Europe, it was actually a Japan only exclusive version of the game, and it had a couple differences compared to the Sega Genesis and the arcade version, including different transformations and some different levels. 
Anyway, those are my thoughts on Altered Beast for the Sega Genesis. It's really fun revisiting a game from my early childhood and like my early career in video games. At the time, I was really just trying to explore what gaming was all about. It's kind of fun to see like how my perspective and things about certain games have really changed over time. Regardless though, that's just my opinion on the matter. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And please don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos just like this one, my vlogs, my podcast shows, and a whole bunch of other great content I got for you here right now on my YouTube channel. And of course, I have to give a big shout out to Jasmine Russell who is supporting me at the Beast tier level over on my Patreon page. You're getting shout outs for the entire month on every single video. If you guys want that same type of love and you guys want to show support for my content here on YouTube, check out my Patreon page down in the description box down below. Below. There's a link that goes directly to the page a whole bunch of tier levels with a bunch of great exclusive content that I know you guys are gonna love That's all I got for you guys right now. I will talk to all of you again very soon. Peace out and stay epic everybody Thanks a ton for watching this video review everyone I really appreciate all the support you've been giving me if you guys can please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great videos Just like this one. I'll leave a few for you to check out here on the side and don't forget I'm streaming every day over on twitch TV I play a bunch of different types of games and we have a whole lot of fun every time I go live I will talk to all of you guys again real soon peace out and stay epic everybody